next uh, session, we have three very exciting uh, short contribution talks. Uh, the first one is by Fitz Sturgill. Sturgill or Sturgill? Sturgill. Sturgill. Um, and um, he'll tell us about his work in uh, the Kepix lab. Thanks. Okay, hi, my name is Fitz. And um, first of all, I want to just point out that I'm, uh, according to Adam's instruction, I'm wearing this uh, really cool uh, shirt that he, that he made just for, the, uh, just for this talk with uh, Mars levels of analysis on it, so which explain everything. So uh, that's, I want to point that out. And also, I'm, I'm looking for a job uh, this year, and, <laughs> and, I, and I like, um, and I like uh, scientific discourse and long walks on the beach. So, um, so uh, today, um, I'm going to tell you a story about uh, two different uh, uh, neuro neuromodulatory uh, populations. Uh, mainly acetylcholine neurons, but also uh, dopamine neurons. And of course, these uh, neuronal populations are distinguished by their uh, widespread projections across the brain. So uh, dopamine neurons project mainly to striatal and uh, uh, frontal cortical areas, whereas, cortic uh, whereas uh, cholinergic neurons project across the entire span of neocortex. And, um, and, and we know uh, a bit about the function of the cholinergic system. It can uh, reconfigure cortical circuits. So I'm showing here some work by Richard Mooney showing that activation of cholinergic neurons can rapidly activate cortex. And um, work from Yang Dian and others has shown that it can uh, lead to uh, cortical desynchronization, which can influence cortical coding. And it's also been shown to be a powerful modulator of synaptic plasticity. And in terms of higher level brain functions, uh, uh, its uh, cholinergic neurons have been implicated in arousal, attention, learning, and memory. But in part due to methodolog methodological difficulties, um, there are not a whole lot of, uh, there are very few recordings in vivo from cholinergic neurons. And so um, I want to pose the question today of what does acetylcholine signal to the brain? And um, in other words, what are the uh, print, and also what are the principles that are that govern the underlying spiking activity of of, of cholinergic neurons? So, uh, uh, Balaj Hangya, a former postdoc in the lab, was really the first to record from uh, cholinergic identified to perform identified recordings from cholinerg cholinergic neurons in vivo, and he used a trick called optogenetic tagging uh, to to do so. And what he found was quite surprising. He found that cholinergic neurons um, were activated uh, uh, both by reward and punishment, um, which was somewhat contrary to some of the previous notions of what people thought that cholinergic neurons did. And these responses were fast, precise, and reliable. And furthermore, he found that the responses of cholinergic neurons to reward were actually modulated by surprise. And so these characteristics are actually reminiscent of, of what one would expect from the uh, dopaminergic system. And so this led us to formulate uh, the following hypothesis, which is that cholinergic neurons provide a signal that conforms uh, to an unsigned uh, reward prediction error signal. And, and so, um, in other words, uh, the uh, unsigned prediction error um, is approximately the absolute value of outcome received um, minus expected. And so this hypothesis generates a number of testable predictions. The first one is that there should be positive responses um, to both reward and punishment in cholinergic neurons. And that's in contrast to what one would expect of dopaminergic neurons, which should show a dip um, um, for punishment. Secondly, um, when associated with a predictive cue, these, res these reinforcement res responses should backpropagate in time to the first predictive cue. And thirdly, um, surprising outcomes that are uncued should show larger responses relative to um, expected outcomes. So in order to test these uh, predictions, um, and, uh, and, and owing to the, um, uh, the challenges from recording from um, deep-lying and sparse cholinergic neurons, uh, we chose to use fiber photometry um, to be able to monitor these signals. And this, and in this, uh, and what fiber pho photometry is, is basically like one pixel imaging. So um, you um, implant a, an optical fiber, and, a, and then you use a genetic trick to express a calcium indicator in the cholinergic neurons. And, um, and, and that allows you to record um, from these deep neurons and gives you an, a population measure of activity. And it also has 
it's also very well suited um, for doing chronic recordings because you can record stably from the same population over days. And, um, and we also used a, uh, uh, and, and then to test the prediction, we um, used a, an odor cued probabilistic outcome task. And in this task, there's two odor cues that have, um, one has a high value and one has a low value. And the value is imparted by the relative uh, probabilities for reward punishment or just a neutral tone. And, um, and so on uh, cued trials, the odor proceeds on the outcome by a two second delay period. And then there's also thrown in there um, uh, uh, a small proportion of totally uncued trials. And, uh, and um, what you can see from the animal's behavior is that the animal will um, develop anticipatory licking um, uh, that is higher for the high value odor cue um, relative to the low value odor cue. And we interpret this anticipatory licking as indexing uh, expectation of value. And so, uh, so we find that cholinergic neurons um, are, show different responses than dopaminergic neurons. Their dopamine neurons are activated by reward, but they show a dip with punishment, whereas the cholinergic neurons, as measured um, using fibrophotometry, um, show activation both by reward and punishment. And this is consistent across mice. Um, and we also find that uh, these... Uh, these uh, reinforcement responses back propagate uh, to the predictive cue. So what I'm showing on, on top is, is, is the photometry responses. And you can see that, um, th that they're higher for the high value cue than they are for the low value cue. And, and it, by comparison to um, a histogram showing anticipatory licking, you can see that this cue response of the cholinergic neurons, it actually precedes anticipatory licking. And, and again, this is consistent across mice. And so therefore, uh, the chat neurons uh, 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 provide um, predictive Q responses that, tra that track expected value. Um, thirdly, uh, we looked at whether um, the uh, outcome responses were uh, modulated by expectation. And, and, and we find that they are, that this is indeed the case. Um, uh, just from this example on the left, you can see that um, the responses to a, 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 a um, uncued or poorly predicted uh, uh, reward delivery are larger than they are for the, um, uh, from the uh, more strongly predicted um, reward delivery that follows the high value queue. And, um, and, 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 and it's, it's, and, um, and, and we can quantify this uh, outcome response by looking at the fluorescence change at the outcome. And, and um, we're following this up also with tetra recordings, but it seems um, to be that the outcome responses are, are, are um, proportional to, uh, are basically inversely correlated with expected value. So um, from these pieces of data, we have um, some support for this unsigned prediction error hypothesis. We find um, that there are, um, that they're back propagating, that there are responses to reward and punishment that are unsigned, that they back propagate, and, and that they're also uh, uh, modul modulated by reward expectation. And they seem to be um, also um, quantitatively graded according to um, the animal's level of expectation. Uh, so for the remainder of the talk, I'm just going to uh, talk about um, just two of, of some of the unresolved questions that are, are left to address about uh, cholinergic signals. And, and, the, and those questions are, what is the relationship of the cholinergic signals to learning? And also the relationship of the cholinergic signals to the canonical dopaminergic reward prediction error. So, uh, and of course, using fiber photometry, it's, it's relatively easy to look at how um, uh, these uh, prediction error signals um, 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 come to be. And so if, if you look at a, um, uh, if you look early in training, what you find is that, um, as shown at the, uh, by this uh, photometry raster plot on the top um, and by the, uh, the average below, you can see that there's just a very small response to the predictive cue and, and a relatively large response to the, um, to the here, here to water delivery. But, um, with training, what happens is that the you, uh, is that the Q response emerges, and then it and, it, and as predicted, it, it it inversely correlates with the size of the outcome response. So uh, we wanted to look um, more. Uh, so in order to look more carefully at the relationships of, of the cholinergic signal to learning and also to 
um, dopaminergic responses, I, I used um, uh, 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 dual fiber photometry um, in order to be able to simultaneously record from these two populations in the same animal. And, and, and here I'm using different colors of calcium indicator to be able to um, separate the um, basal forebrain cholinergic signals from the, um, from the neighboring uh, uh, dopamine axons that course towards the uh, nucleus accumbens. And, and then I use a, re a reversal learning task in which, um, again, there's two odors. One I term, is termed the CS plus, and that is the odor that is currently rewarded, whereas the other odor is either punished or nothing happens at all. And so then I can sw switch the contingencies of these um, uh, 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 of the task and then see what, um, ha how the cholinergic uh, system responds. And, and, what I've, and what we find is that, um, is that the cholinergic signals seem to re adapt, uh, re uh, adapt remarkably quickly. So on the left is just a, uh, um, is a, um, a raster plot showing um, licking, and, and at the, in the, on the horizontal line is the reversal point. So the top, uh, so the, so, uh, um, and, and what I'm showing is always the, um, is, is always the uh, rewarded uh, CS plus odor. And what you see is that the, um, the, um, the original, the animal shows anticipatory licking to the original CS plus odor, and then at the reversal point, there's a, um, for a, um, a number of trials, the animal doesn't lick in anticipation because it doesn't understand the new contingency, but it's able to learn the new contingency remarkably quickly, and within a handful of trials, it develops anticipatory licking again. And if you look in the middle at the cholinergic uh, signals, you see that, um, they, uh, they, they, that there's, a, uh, there's the Q response of the cholinergic neurons, and yet um, uh, very quickly uh, um, is regained uh, following the reversal. And, if, and, and you can also look at to see what happens in the dopaminergic neurons, and you see that um, they too are regained, but at least for in this example, it doesn't look like it happens as quickly as in, in the cholinergic neurons. And, and you can also look um, to see sort of like the dynamic prediction error across the re reversals um, in terms of the outcome response. And so if you just look at the first initial trials following the reversal, you, s you see that outcome responses are magnified for both the cholinergic and the dopaminergic neurons. And, and so a final bit of data that I'll close with is, is to just quantify um, um, uh, this, the speed of, at which the cholinergic response to the odor cue and, and the dopaminergic Respond to the odor cue um, adapt across reversals, and, and and I should say that this is this data is somewhat preliminary, but at least um, across two mice and 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 nine reversals, um, it, it it supports the idea that cholinergic neurons seem to be adapting remarkably quickly. So on the left, I'm just showing um, the uh, uh, the same odor for um, and showing basically what happens to the same odor as it suddenly becomes the CS plus Q, and you can see that uh, um, that. Yet, yet the size of the response um, goes from near zero to, um, um, to um, sizable, and it occurs you know, within, um, um, it seems to um, ascend within just a handful of trials. And on the right side, what I'm plotting is, 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 the, um, is, is odor A followed by odor B, but they're, uh, but, uh, but they're both the CS plus. And so you can see that um, there is a Q response initially for both to the um, CS plus for both dopamine and, and acetylcholine neurons, but then um, the um, the new CS plus odor um, is seems to be um, adapted. It, it seems to um, be uh, regain the the properties of the former CS plus odor more slowly for the dopamine neurons. And I um, and I don't I don't really have um, perfect explanation for this. Um, I, I, I need to think more about exactly why, why this might be, but perhaps, you know, because it's, maybe there's some cost to unwinding synaptic weights for a, um, for a signed uh, prediction error signal relative to an unsigned prediction error signal. So um, I'll just conclude by saying that uh, um, cholinergic neurons seem to signal an unsigned reinforcement prediction error signal, and that it's complementary to, but distinct from dopaminergic RPE. And, and it seems that both in terms of um, onset latencies and also in terms of plasticity, speed seems to be a distinguishing feature of this signal. And, 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 and we speculate that it may, be, it may serve as a cortical teaching signal that may um, um, work alongside um, uh, dopaminergic RPE. So thanks a lot. I'll take any questions. Oh. Yeah.
Yeah, so the, um, there's rough uh, uh, topography to the projections um, between, um, from the, their locations of, of, in, in basal forebrain to cortex, but what Balaj, uh, I'm recording only from the HDB, but what Balaj showed previously is that the responses seem to be, um, in terms of reinforcement signaling, tend to be, seem to be remarkably homogeneous. So, um, right now, we think that there, that there isn't that much specificity, but I think that's still an, act, an area of, of, of research. Um, any others? Yeah. Given that you're measuring across the whole population of cells, how do you know that it's really an unsigned prediction error from individual cells? Um, well, I, 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 yeah, sure. So how, how do we, given that we're um, making a population measurement, how do we know that individual cells might still have uh, signed responses? And that... That, so this, um, you know, we're basing this work on, on um, well, for, second, first of all, we're, we're essentially doing those experiments by doing tetrad recordings now. And secondly, um, based upon what Balaj found, he, he, the, uh, cholinergic neurons always showed um, positive responses both to reward and punishment. Uh, so, okay, thank you.